All right, so here we are. We have the hydraulics pumps that we'll be uh, using for the mini snowcat drive. These pumps came from the surplus center, um, about $129 US. They come set up with the controls on the left hand side and the rotation of the drive shaft is set up with this pump for uh, clockwise rotation. Now, after doing a whole bunch of research, I found that if you remove this auxiliary pump on the top here and you rotate the charge, plump, charge pump plate 180 degrees, you can actually set the pump up to function counterclockwise. So that'll work perfectly with the Kohler Commander Pro engine. And um, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and take the auxiliary pump off. We're gonna take the charge pump plate off the gerotor um, sprocket within that uh, is used for the charge pump and then once we get those pieces off we'll be able to loosen off the end cap and we'll actually rotate this one 180 degrees so that uh, the operation of this pump will be mirrored from the other one. So first step, loosen off these top cap bolts, it's a 10 millimeter. 10 millimeter socket required for that. And we'll just back these out. I'm pretty sure that this pump has never seen action in its life. It was probably purchased as new old stock surplus center, and so it's in excellent condition. I'm just gonna lay out our parts here so that comes off pretty easy you can see the inside of the pump now I'm just gonna lay it on its uh, top side right now just to keep it out of the way and this is the gerotor uh, plate so the orientation of this flat side here with respect to the work ports, the A and B work ports, is what determines um, the operation direction of the pump. So this uh, configuration right here is set for clockwise, so we just turn this 180 degrees and that will give us counterclockwise operation. But for now, we got to go one layer deeper. We're going to pull this gerotor valve or gear I guess you should say off and I've never done this before this is the first time so I'm not quite sure what I need to do here what I might do is just uh, just absolutely full of assembly oil so we're gonna just sop a little bit of this up they probably ran it up at the factory after it was put together to make sure that it's happy and so try and pull the, the center low part out first and see if that gets us anywhere I have a feeling that the the teeth of these are concaved so that they kind of interlock with one another the last thing I want to do is put up hard edge from something on there going to very carefully just use some of those pliers see if we can coax this up without doing any damage. No, it's just not going to cooperate. Ah, oh, there we go. It was being held in surely by the surface tension of the oil. That gives you an idea of how, how much of a tolerance there is there when just that little bit of oil can hold it in place. So we're going to sop a bit more up. Let's see if we can pull this guy out just by hand. No tools. There we go break the little vacuum on that. 
All right. Take our hands off a little bit. And we'll go to the next step here. We'll just indexing pins to make sure that the charge pump housing lines up properly. And we're going to go down and take the top cap of the pump off. Now, according to the instructions, they recommend that you only remove two of these bolts to begin with. And then I have a feeling that the pistons are under some kind of strain pressure below this, so we'll have to be careful that this whole assembly doesn't just leap up out uncontrollably. So we're just going to gently release these together. There's some indexing pins in there, so the pressure is off of that spring off. We're going to just care, carefully get this out. I don't want to have to rebuild anything more than I have to. There we go. Good. So there's the business side. And let me turn this guy full 180. Let me reseat that charge pump shaft in there. Well, so what's happened is the little pistons inside there have come out and they're not aligned straight anymore so that they don't slide into their little happy cylinder bore. There we go. Now they're sliding free. They're not going to bind on the side of their cylinders self for future. There we go. So that's going together with much less resistance. There we have it. So that's in place. I'm just gonna wipe off this oil. Well, a little messy, but could be worse. compress those springs for the pistons until we get this top cap seated back on the o-ring. We'll set the index pins back in place. And so this is the rotor part and this is the housing part. Those two go together. So this guy spins around like that and moves the fluid in and out. So now the top cap is actually reversed. So the A and B work ports are here. So A, we need to have the flat spot. Make sure the O-ring is good on that. Have the flat spot aligned to the correct side. Make sure I don't have two pumps that set opposite again here. So I want the flat side to be the A side. Just take our time, get that to slide in. Nice. Perfect. All right. So it's this little kind of gasket here and then the o-ring is the business part of that seal and we want the orientation of this to be as such so we're going to make sure that those indexing pins line up into the top cap like so and that will allow the work ports of the auxiliary pump from both of these to line up uh, the same in the same direction. Auxiliary pump cap bolts, the 
just tighten them down gently. Good. Torque wrench adapter. And we're going to set this to 12. We'll hold 12. Right there. this later on but uh, for now that's about it so we have two pumps and the other one's already been switched for the counterclockwise rotation and so now both control levers are in the middle that's going to be good the work ports are all along the back here so this will actually face the front of the machine and then the auxiliary pump work ports are both on the same side so then we can tee these off and connect them together for uh, other fun stuff maybe like a blade or something but uh, there you have it 